Hello, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a breaking new episode of CSGO News. I hope you guys are all enjoying. As always, all of today's stories will be time marked down below. I'm going to share with all of you some newer stories this past weekend, as well as some older stuff you might have missed last week. So hope you all enjoy. And as always, there's a knife giveaway down below, free to enter for a flip knife black laminate. So best of luck to all of you guys who enter. Let's hop into our first story, though. That's all around HLTV. If you guys have not heard, according to their co-owner, Peter Milvanovic, I'll link his Twitter down below, has a great Twitter account for you guys to follow. He actually said, accordingly yesterday, they did catch a few of the representatives in the Asian scene apparently taking money and bribes to promote Asian tournaments on the HLTV webpage. According also to Peter, uh, even further than that, guys, those same tournaments were also known to be match fixing. So going forward, some big hits here for HLTV as they'll only be promoting online qualifiers and Asian tournaments of notable organizers. That means people like Star Series, ESL, other smaller tournaments in the Asian scene for the time being will not be promoted on HLTV webpages. And both those representatives who took those bribes have been let go by HLTV. So some breaking news there. If you guys expect to watch these tournaments on HLTV's webpage in the future, they're only going to be using notable organizers who have past experience with that because accordingly match fixing is a big thing of course you guys know the history of the Asian scene out there and especially if you're going to match fix it's most notably done in those smaller tournaments so going forward HLTV will be very wary actually hosting those tournaments and showing them on their web pages and also nothing took to Twitter a couple days ago to clarify what his team was going to be that being him shroud of Sean Garris with and Lurpus the kind of new ESCA open team out there that was gonna be a fun roster and it definitely set to be a fun roster in the future he did clarify they have no permanent plans for the future and their roster can change freely and Shroud is still going to be retired from CSGO. He's not going to be coming back to any anytime soon to competitive CSGO and they consider this to be a fun roster. So if you guys think of a comparison out there, uh, Mythic Stream team, that kind of being an even comparison, but this team even being less than that. Again, their roster is not permanent. They could be doing many things in the future. They could fall apart very shortly. Nothing wanted to clarify. These are not official plans for the future of that team, which seems to be still going to be a fun team to watch. Also on top of that, if you guys remember Envious Streamer Loop, he was actually finally signed to Envious a while ago, he actually had lunch with nothing yesterday, so there's a quick picture for all of you guys about that. And speaking of ESCA Open, of course, nothing is his team with Stroud and all those guys will be in ESCA Open. A team is going to be actually in ESCA Advanced. If you guys do not know, now ESCA has those three kind of divisional sections. It's ESCA Main or Open, as well as ESCA Advanced, and then it goes to Mountain Dew League, kind of three divisions separately, but Advanced is actually in between ESCA Open as well as Mountain Dew League, so it's kind of, a, I guess you could say, a higher tier in between those two. Uh, apparently, CLG Red, their newest member being Miss Harvey. She is now back in that roster as their member Promise 9K actually stepped in as a sub uh, when they lost Potter to Team Rez, one of the better female teams in the world right now and CLG Red is certainly up there as well. So Miss Harvey is now welcome back to that roster and CLG Red's roster kind of in controversy here has now been invited and actually their application was accepted into ESCA Advanced when many male teams out there who out qualify them, many teams who have actually made the playoffs and CLG Red has not made playoffs yet were actually denied their application. So of course ESCA forums these last few weeks have been riddled with of course people going and backlashing the team itself. It is a bit curious though why you would have a female team automatically accepted into ESCA Advanced while many male teams out there do outcompete them statistically and you deny them applications. So of course that could bring up a lot of issues out there. ESCA is yet to make a response on that but CLG Red will make themselves comfortable inside ESCA Advanced while many teams who are better than them are going to be stuck in ESCA Open. And next in CSGO News we actually had LDLC's coach kind of take the Twitter yesterday to make a recommendation to MBK and of course Envious their team out there having many struggles along with G2 as well. Of course, a French shuffle expected sometime soon, but LDLC's coach actually had some unique advice for French players out there, I think in particular, where he did tell them maybe to work a real job as they, of course, uh, play also CSGO on the side to kind of realize how lucky those players are. Now, of course, people out there taking this uh, maybe the wrong way or kind of both ways. Of course, why would a coach be telling these guys how lucky they are? It took them severe skill and hard work to get where they are, which is certainly true, but I understand what he's trying to say. Of course, I think what he's trying to say as well is if these guys actually have to work a real life job, you know, if they have to work a real life job for the organization itself, that being envious or maybe even a part time real real life job like being a waiter or a checkout clerk, whatever it might be, to understand how lucky they are to be in the position they are, they might actually, of course, try even more and play even harder to stay where they currently are. So if that makes any sense for you guys, I think he's just trying to motivate the guys themselves and trying to have them realize how lucky they are to be a top tier pro player on an organizational team like envious itself. Of course, envious having their struggles. And, and he might be thinking these players have gone complacent. Of course, they're being paid large sums of money and have not done much at all and even being relegated from Pro League and not even participating in Mountain Dew League next season, he might be saying, he might be trying to say they're being a bit overpaid for how they're performing in-game wise. So I think that was his advice and people kind of took it the wrong way. Kind of interesting advice though, kind of uh, uh, taking back a perspective there, work a real life job or a really real hard job to understand how lucky you are in your current position. And also in very old news that happened when I was actually gone this past weekend, we did have Fnatic finally re 
design their academy team. That was going to be the winners of the squad who actually won the Gamer Z show. If you guys watch that, I always call it Gamer Z, but it's actually the Gamer Show. They did sign four of those five members. Uh, they signed all five actually for the first uh, pre preliminary period. I believe it was actually a one month uh, a one month salary or a one month contract. They now officially re-signed four of the five members, which seemingly will be, I believe, the the the, the first promise was going to be a six month salary. So uh, the full team or the full team will not be going forward, but four of the five will be. And accordingly, one of the members who is not going forward will be his name is Canny, and that will be of course due to communication issues. So reportedly and allegedly, you guys, if you watch the team itself, he's been known to be their their best player. Um, but apparently, some social anxiety and some communication issues, he will not be going forward with this roster, even though he was one of their better players, if not the best player. They have re-signed for the five gamers show people as the Fnatic Academy roster for what should be the next six months. So that's a cool thing to see. These these youngsters come up on a show like Gamers, which should be coming back with season three, and they have now been signed for professional contracts for another six months. That's pretty cool to see, but unfortunate news for Kenny. I hope he goes somewhere good. And I probably should have this last story actually after the story about Envious and, and the LDLC coach saying they maybe should work real life jobs. Is accordingly, we do have some CSGO pros out there considering quitting CSGO. If you guys know, of course, Snyder, he did take to full time streaming after being released um, and on that bench for quite some time now. Who knows if he'll return to professional CSGO, but he did tweet out this, uh, you know, kind of a, a weird tweet to tweet out a few days ago, which of course does question what a real life job, what a good real life job is for someone with very little experience who's, of course, an ex pro CSGO player. What experience do you really have? And this is really why we're seeing a lot of pro players out there treasure those those education they're getting on the side. We have many players out there, like I uh, wanted to come to mind right away is Zai Wu, who's finishing his four year education, getting that degree to make sure he has a backup plan. But now we have Snyder asking Twitter, and no one really knows if he's quitting CSGO, if he's quitting full time streaming. I know he's trying to make that work, but he has been taking to Twitter to actually ask about what, what full time jobs would be good for a guy like him, which is a bit curious. So as of right now, do we think he's quitting streaming? There's been no updates on his Twitter ever since. It's possible though to see the God Snyder himself apparently maybe quitting CSGO. Now also very lastly for today's episode of CSGO News, guys, maybe expect a double upload today or an early upload tomorrow as well. We have plenty of stories to share with all of you and thank you all for the great feedback so far. I hope you're all enjoying the show so far as well. We do have CSGO Roll temporarily shutting down their services. Now it's kind of in, uh, a, a bit of a weird update as well because many of you guys know about the seven day trade ban. Many other sites out there that are well known gambling sites are taking other skins. We have TF2 skins, H1Z1 skins, Rust skins being used on all these websites out there, but I can't confirm, guys, many of the websites I used to, to work with are definitely struggling financially, but I did not know they were struggling to the point where they're actually temporarily going to shut down. Of course, we have many trading websites out there that are taking breaks, and, and CS Money is largely inactive. You can still use the site, but definitely not near as much as you used to, so CS Go Roll for the time being, they're going to try and make fixes. I think they will be back sometime soon in the future, but as of right now, they're temporarily shutting down their services, which for some of you is going to be good news, for some of you is going to be bad news. For me, I really don't care, but I thought I should share it with all of you. It's very curious to see a lot of websites out there are certainly struggling with this trade ban persisting, not only for CSGO, but also for PUBG skins. And also, very lastly for today's episode of CSGO News, guys, we do have Optic making us all wait. I thought I'd mention this in the title and, and of course, give you guys anything I, I know about, but as of right now, there have been a no announcements. If you guys did know, it was actually back in early May and late April that Optic Gaming was announcing, apparently, hosting tryouts for an Indian team, an all-Indian roster, now that being over a billion, um, a billion population for that country, you'd think they could probably find five really good CSGO players. As of right now, no updates from Optic Gaming, but it should be around this time. I think it was promised that tryouts will be over the 13th or 14th of May, of course, today being after that. So expect sometime soon, as Optic has us all waiting, guys. Apparently, some updates coming for up, uh, CS, Optic CSGO, that is, for a new Indian roster. Now, this could be big news as well, because, of course, their current roster is not doing strikingly well. We still have yet to see those guys compete at LAN events as well. So we're going to see what the future of Optic CSGO is. Will it have one roster? Will they have two rosters? And uh, which roster will eventually be better? You guys can comment down below what you think. I have some high hopes for the Indian roster, although I've never really been too in-depth with Indian CSGO players. And that's going to do it for today's episode of CSGO News. I hope you guys did enjoy. I will see you later today or early tomorrow with another episode of CSGO News, and hopefully this weekend with some cool stuff coming soon. Hope you guys all enjoyed. My name is Jake Moore, like you. I will see you all next time. Goodbye, guys. What's going on guys? CSGO News back here with another video. My name is Private McGurbagee McGoba Guy. Mahurbadur McGibby Guy. Gabadoo McGibba Go. McGurbagee Guy McGoomy. What's up guys? CSGO News here. Welcome back. McGurbagee Guy McGoba Gobadoo. McGooby Goomy Gami Gamadoo.